So in implant dentistry, we want to have both white aesthetics and also pink aesthetics. Part of pink aesthetics is the mid-labial gingival margin, the soft tissue contour, the color, the texture. But very important is the implant papilla. That little peak of bone, that little scallop, gingival scallop, is very important in the actual soft tissue aesthetics around single tooth implants. Grunder in 2000 talks about when do you actually get papilla forming with a single tooth implant. And he found there were two critical factors. Those critical factors was that you had to have healthy bone on the adjacent tooth and you had a distance of five millimeters from the contact point to the osseous crest. So the presence of the papilla, a full papilla within an adjacent tooth and a single tooth implant, it would always occur if you had a distance of five millimeters or less between the contact point and the bone crest. And the bone crest was determined not by the actual implant side, as in this situation, but from the bone on the adjacent tooth. So if this was five millimeters or less, you'd always get a full papilla forming. So let's have a look at how this papilla infill works. This patient originally presented wanting to have the diastomus closed between her 1-1 one, one, and 2-1, her central incisors. But upon reflection of the tissues, you'll notice there's a buccal draining sinus. You can see there's fistulas that are exiting through there on the buccal aspect. So upon radiographic examination, it was determined uh, that the 2-1 had a hopeless prognosis and this tooth was extracted. The 1-1 one, one had to have endodontic management. At the time of, of extraction of the 2-1, we carried out a rich preservation procedure by uh, using bovine hydroxyapatite. Implant placement was carried out and the final crowns were done. And you can see in this case, when the crowns were placed on the natural tooth and the implant crown, you'll notice this little gingival embrasure that's between the central incisors. But three to six months later, you'll see this papilla start to grow and infill because we know we have that distance of five millimeters or less. We will always get that growth of papilla and that full papilla uh, infill of that gingival embrasure and a nice aesthetic result for the patient. So we talk about single tooth. What about adjacent implants? When you place two implants next to each other, are we able to attain a nice looking papilla, a full volume papilla between adjacent implants? It's one of the hardest things to do. It's one of the, I'll call it the holy grail, getting you know, beautiful soft tissue papilla between adjacent implants. It's not something that is able to form predictably. And I want to explain to you why this happens. We know when we place implants adjacent to another implant, we want to leave at least three millimeters of space between one implant and another implant. And the original concept was to leave this distance because we'd have this vertical bone loss to the first thread, normally you know, one and a half millimeters of bone loss. But as part of that bone loss, that vertical bone loss, you would also have this horizontal component to the bone loss of roughly around about 1.3 to 1.4. So if you place your implants too close to each other, that distance, that little horizontal um, biologic width dimension becomes very close to each other and you start to lose that bony peak between the adjacent implants. So you might ask if you place your implants then three millimeters apart, keeping the bony peaks, will you get papilla? Is there something called a five millimeter rule with adjacent implants? No. There's no such thing as a five millimeter rule between adjacent implants because the contact point is arbitrary as well. Tarnow and his co-workers in 2003 placed adjacent implants. They gave local mistake to the patients and they actually probed and bone sanded the inter-implant papilla. What did they find? They found that the thickness of that inter-implant papilla is roughly from one to seven millimeters. On average, roughly about 3.4 millimeters. So you're always struggling with a soft tissue height, a soft tissue volume in these sort of situations. So I hope this bites give you some guidelines and some ideas on the role that papilla plays in pink aesthetics. <laughs>